Hello everyone and welcome back to Imperator Rome. I'm Lord Formant. Here we are with a guide for the Seleucids, Seleucids, it's actually Seleucids from what I can find. And uh, this is going to go over some basic stuff like how to keep your empire stable, early expansion, what innovations to take, what religious stuff to do. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy it, hopefully it will help you. So let's get right into it. First thing is as soon as you load in the game, you're gonna get this decision here. You can choose to negotiate with the Mauras about um, your Eastern territories. Uh, if you agree to their deal, you cede this area in the East, but you don't go to war with them. I recommend every time you actually take this. It is possible to win this war, it's super hard. Um, the biggest reason is the war goal will actually be this province here, which is um, uh, this is one of the provinces you need to control to recreate Alexander's empire, as is this one down here. Um, but it will actually be you attacking them in some ways, um, which means they hold the province. It makes it very difficult to win. And in fact, you do not want to fight them here. You want to move all your troops immediately to the Antigonid border for... A war with them so you want to make this peace deal basically um Trindugupta will marry um i think it's the daughter of the current ruler maybe i think so and there'll be a truce you'll get some more elephants in your capital army obviously we'll just go forward a couple days so that works there we go ta -da, ta -da. she gets married peace is given we get I think two two regiments of war elephants in our capital army, which are expensive, and we do no longer control this area here. On the other hand, we are a much more stable empire for the loss of those lands. Plus, it keeps the Maura from attacking us for a while because they have to deal with all the unrest from those lands instead. Uh, you start off with a couple subjects as the Silicids. You start off with Idea Bean here, Parthia, and Bactria as your subjects. Um, you also start as with Tylos down here uh, as a tributary, which is quite interesting. Um, they are almost irrelevant. <laughs> uh, the next thing to do is to raise all your levies, all your troops, max out your legion as much as you can. Um, obviously put some commanders in the army in case your guy dies. Uh, you're going to want to put in slightly more uh, supply cohorts than most people would want to start with initially, just because this war you don't want to have to retreat to your lands to re resupply. So that's what I've done to max out the army here. And then you want to grab every single unit you can get, move it to the border of the Antigonid's lands, because immediately at, uh, at game start the Antigonids are going to attack Macedon and sometimes Thrace, at which point they will leave their um, eastern frontier open. You will get an event. I believe it might only be through the heirs of Alexander, um, but basically you'll get a CB legacy of Alexander to attack them. Um, and that is the CB where every time you occupy a province, it immediately flips to your side, which is why you want all your troops on the border and why you want to equip this one for a longer campaign than normal because you don't want to have to pause in your conquest. You want to wait for the event to fire. You have a choice, demand their lands in Syria in exchange for peace, or just outright invade them. I recommend you outright invade them, although the peace treaty is nice to grab this land here. You can actually get much more if you don't agree to the peace treaty. Um, I did a, I did two Seleucids game. The first time I took the truce, it was very... Difficult to expand. I wasn't overly unstable, but I didn't get much further. The second time I declared war, I took all their lands out here, except for the little bit Egypt took. I went all the way up here. I took all of this. They conquered Macedon, so I invaded and I took all of Macedon. And then I invaded and conquered Thrace. And then I invaded and conquered Egypt and got all the way down to uh, here by the time uh, the starting guy here, so, uh, Seleucos, dictator, <laughs> Nick Cater died. Um, uh, he's got. He's one of the younger of the successors. Um, he's only 54, which doesn't seem young. But when you realize that most of the, why did I not get their ruler? Uh, most of the others are in their 60s and 70s. Um, although Cassandros here is uh, younger, and the Antigonid's second ruler here, Demetrius, will get also claims as well. 
Um, Seleucid is in the best position to actually reunite Alexander's empire, mostly within his lifetime. Obviously, you're not going to be able to get the Maura lands, and you're also going to struggle to keep things stable. Um, but that's what I recommend you do. You declare war. <clears throat> you leave your um, main army on Automate. You put most of your other armies on Carpet Siege. And like a swarm of ants or bees or something, you will just you will just simply overrun, take all these provinces. You want to try and push um, through here and get this area as soon as you can. Uh, once you get in here, that follow their kingdoms over. Um, even if you just take out their kingdom, that's going to push you to like 600 provinces or so, um, which is amazing. At which point, you're obviously a great power. You can also enact Imperial Ambition, uh, which is worth doing when you can get it. Gets you four slots and two um, four provincial investments. Uh, it's pretty good. To start out, though, you're going to want to probably do Morale of Armies. Probably monthly corruption, and then almost definitely loyalty of generals and admirals. Um, the other one is not really worth it. The other one you could go for military would be uh, reinforcement morale recovery, but I find the uh, just five morale of armies to be better right now. So other stuff. As the Seleucids, you have the heritage of Seleucos. I'm, Sele I'm saying it all wrong. I cannot figure out how to pronounce these. So the heritage of your starting guy which gives you plus six unintegrated culture group happiness, which is probably the best of the successor starting ones, other than maybe the Antigonid one. Um, it basically means you can own land that you haven't integrated, and just by default, those populations are happier. You also get some popularity, which helps keep your legitimacy and thereby your stability and stuff up um, at the cost of assimilation speed. So you're basically not gonna be able to culturally convert your lands. That's fine, you don't have to. What you want to do, at least, is religiously convert them. So that is actually going to be your big priority, is keeping what you have stable um, and loyal, because most of your provinces out here start the game pretty unhappy with you. And left alone, they will revolt. Obviously, once they get low, you want to put on harsh treatment, try and keep them loyal, but Assuming you conquer all this land, your A is going to be in the 60s or 70s, and you're going to face revolts. Thankfully, once you conquer this land, you'll be rich, so I advise you hire some mercenaries. Um, mercenaries, I found, are the best thing in the game to stomping rebellions because they stay loyal. Um, they can be raised indefinitely without your war exhaustion from getting high. Um, and they've got, you know, pretty good troops usually. That's another thing you got to keep an eye on is your war exhaustion. Obviously, it's going to go high in the initial war versus the Antigonids because you need the levies to conquer land quickly. After which, you should definitely try and get mercs. Still want to use your levies, but you got to keep an eye on the exhaustion. Once this hits 20, it's going to become super hard to keep your land happy. So how do we correct this, make people happy? We go religious advances. We ignore Marshall, um, uh, even though it is useful if you want to do the experience... Uh, exploit where you raise your levies, wait for once, disband them. If you want to blaze through your uh, military tradition trees, you get these four right here. Military artisans, basic training, recruitment standards, and learning on the job. And that will progress you down those quicker. But if you want to play the game without using such an exploit, which is almost definitely going to be patched in the future, you start with religious ideas. You go due process. You go accepted rights. So this is plus three. So now all your provinces combined with your starting heritage have nine, which helps a lot. Open religion. Minor uh, syncretism, which gives another plus three. Um, to be fair, this is, you've now added a lot of happiness to them just by existing. Divine sacrifice. And the big one you want to get here is prescribed canon. This adds conversion policy laws. Also just makes your state religion happier. Um, if you want to keep going and creating land stable, you can go down here to ban witchcraft and formulaic worship, um, which is going to significantly boost your conversion speed, but you've got enough right now to start converting stuff. The other stuff you can grab is FUG here, and then grab reduce governorship, which provides provincial loyalty. Uh, considering there's very few ways to get provincial loyalty, from innovations, that's definitely one of the best ones. So just by doing that, if we go and look at these territories, that the ones that were super disloyal, like negative 10, are now only negative three. 
Um, you can overcome that given time. The other thing you want to do is immediately flip your law to religious conversion. Costs you the stability and political power, but will speed up the conversion of these lands significantly. Um, doesn't look to be huge, but it is. Plus 30% really helps. And now, more importantly, you can also build grand temples. Um, when you have money to spare, which is probably not before the first war with the Antigonids, you want to throw down some of these. You want to fill up basically every single thing that's green here should have a grand temple in it. And as the game goes on, if you want to convert things to your culture, you go oratory, gradual economic integration, and get grand theaters and build them. The next tree I recommend you probably go down, if you can, is the oratory here. Get all these aggressive expansion reductions. Um, you're going to have a lot of aggressive expansion, and if you try and expand and keep conquering the successors early, you're going to need this. Um, if you don't try and conquer the successors early and stay stable, obviously you probably want to go and grab the... Uh, formulaic worship, and then probably do the commerce or um, tax tree to make enough money to fund armies and marks. I usually neglect the military tree quite a bit until I'm ready to start going down the military traditions. Um, your research efficiency is rather pathetic at the beginning of the game, and it's only going to get worse. So you're starting eight innovations, putting them in the right places is pretty key. Another thing to do is you really do want to get this legal patronage plus two loyalty of characters as soon as you can. That will make a big difference. Um, other things to watch out for. Um, if the Dahe up here form out of any of these, there can be an event where your ruler gets killed and they declare war on you to take your land with the Imperial Conquest CB. Um, I haven't seen the AI do it. Um, I've done it a couple times myself. Thankfully, Bactria and Parthia will stay pretty much loyal for your whole game. Um, they are quite strong. Bactria has about 25,000 troops. Um, they're quite capable of handling rebellions and invasions along the side of Parthia. They will also send troops to help you in the war, which is nice. Uh, you start out with a wonder, Guardians of Babylon. You get monthly statementship, uh, 0.1%, and civic tax investment. The monthly statementship doesn't seem huge, but it actually is. It means all your... People that you put in office are going to be slightly more skilled than they would be. Um, so obviously you want to put people in office who have high finesse so that they get the high rating and you get the largest bonus. Um, it's just very nice that some of them start higher than they would otherwise. Uh, in terms of omens and religion, this is where you got to be. It's really up to you. Um, you start out with two Hellenic and two Chaldean um, religions. Chaldean is the Babylonian one. It's rather small. Uh, if you want to stay with a divided pantheon, snagging a Zoroastrian one will help a lot. But the downside is if your deities are not Hellenic, the conversion rate is negative uh, 40, as you can see. Mismatching pantheon deity religion. So you want to change that over when you can, ideally as soon as you can. Um, you don't want to do it to get below 20 stability. You need 20 stability if you want to invade the Antigonids, or there, you know, you want to start another war immediately after. Um, but if you do, you want to swap away from the two Chaldeans and probably throw in a Hellenic. Athena is not bad for the political influence. Zeus is really useful. Uh, this one down here, Taichi or whatever, the goddess of luck. Um, she is really good with the monthly stability change. Getting stability is very tricky. This makes a big difference in the long run. Um, the reduced aggressive expansion on Omen is really nice. Uh, the other one is Hera, which has provincial loyalty, which is also very useful. Uh, I haven't really tested which of these three is better. Um, I went Hera both times to keep my lands loyal, but I didn't overly focus on conversion in either of those. So um, It's up to you. This one might be the strongest one early on just for the stability, because you're going to be conquering a lot and your AE will force your stability down. Plus, che cheaper Merc maintenance is always useful if you're conquering stuff, but it's kind of up to you. Those are definitely the best ones. If you want to flip to Zoroastrian or you want to include them to make them stable, you can pick Zoroaster, which does provincial loyalty as his passive effect. Um, on the other hand, it also slows down your conversion of the Zoroastrians. So uh, You basically want to replace Naboo here as well. Um, probably going to do Hermes. 
Hermes gives the national commerce income. The other option is you go Apollo Nabu here, which is kind of a hybrid deity. And that gives, again, plus three unintegrated culture group happiness. Um, <laughs> it's amazing that you can almost get your lands stable just through innovations and your religion. Uh, speaking of stability, you start out with quite a few barbarian uh, regions in your lands, and you want to get rid of them pretty quickly. Thankfully, your governors will do stuff like uh, civilization change to try and get rid of them. Uh, you may need to, like, this guy here is not automatically increasing the civilization, so it might be worth flipping this to civilization in order to try and get rid of these two. You want to get rid of all of them as soon as you can, otherwise you're going to be constantly fighting invading hordes, and it just becomes a pain. Another thing you might consider is throwing down a fort here and this crossing, because there will be barbarians invading through here periodically. Putting a fort there basically stops the invasion. Um, they get stuck on forts a lot, or it gives you time to invade and do stuff. Um, in terms of conquering, as I already said, you want to take over all this. Afterwards, I recommend going for Macedon or Thrace early on, rather than going for Egypt. You can take over Egypt, but the reason you don't want to take over Egypt is because Egypt is mostly Kemetic and Egyptian culture, basically. If you do that, you're going to be even more unstable. And yes, you're going to be pretty unstable for taking over Aramaic and Phrygian area here and Sibylline and Canaanite religion. But if you do conquer Macedon and Thrace, you're going to get Macedonian population and Hellenic population as well, which will help both with your research. The provinces will be less rebellious, though they still might revolt. And uh, it will just enable your empire to be slightly more stable, plus you preempt any invasion by Rome or anybody to take over and unite those lands. Then you can do a standard strategy for taking over Greece. Um, if you've gone down the uh, oratory tree, you want to snag the stuff that does improve opinions. You improve opinions with the other Greek city-states down here, and you can basically simply feudatory them. Uh, at which point they they provide a ton of troops for your wars, and you can freely um, integrate them at your leisure. You also have missions to support that. Um, in terms of the missions you should take, if you're going to invade the Antigonids, which I recommend you do, because it's so easy to take them out, you obviously want to do Syrian Ambition. Um, you want to start this mission as soon as you can, keep going down. Uh, it will give you... you got to conquer these regions, which... I find is actually hard to do if Egypt gets up here quickly and takes any of them, then you have to fight Egypt for the land. It's a pain. Um, you also need to make sure you take out this country right here. Uh, if you're going to take them out for that mission, I recommend you do it while you're at war with the Antigonids in like the initial war, because otherwise they're a tributary, so you're going to be fighting another war with them. And you have to wait for the truce to expire. Um, this one hung me up for quite a while. But you get some stability out of it, which is very useful. Uh, and then it wants you to build up and fortify Syria. You can have the choice to move your capital basically to here. Uh, or leave it in Babylon. And then you finish that and you get other missions. Um, the other one that you could take if you're not going to go is the Sat Trap of Babylonia. Which is quite useful. Uh, this one basically will give you bonuses to keeping this area stable. Uh, it basically involves kind of flirting with their religion, kind of promoting their um, holy people up a bit. You can then basically take them out and uh, go back to being fully Hellenic. Um, but basically it's to improve Babylon, and you get stuff like Fort Defense, a dynastic cult, and then you get more Macedonians to keep the area stable. This one's useful, noble happiness, but it's not nothing so unbelievably broken that uh, you desperately need it. Uh, this is something to do, I think, when you have free time. The other area to go to is Armenia. Um, it, this is your just standard conquest one, so I don't rarely recommend you do this first. Um, you really want to take over this land or do the Babylonian one earlier. Uh, but basically it wants you to conquer this area and then, you know, put one of the governors in charge and you get a triumph. Uh, it's your standard conquest. It's nothing special. Uh, the more you conquer, the more events and missions you'll get invading Egypt and Greece and stuff. It's pretty fun. 
The Seleucids are very easy to reunite uh, Alexander's empire. I would argue they're probably the easiest to do it with. Although, and the Antigonids also have a really good shot at it. But compared to Egypt, Macedon, and Thrace, much easier to do it as these guys because you own this land, which if we look at what actual provinces exist here, um, ignoring... Uh, let's see if we can ignore the wastelands. I don't know if we can ignore the way there we go As you can see there's lots of wastelands. It makes invading through here a pain um, There's so many little routes in and out so many little territories much easier to start the game holding it um, As the Seleucids you also have access to several achievements um, Obviously, I've completed a lot of these uh, do, 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 do. Let's see uh, adopt the Empire form, something you can do very easily as these guys if you invade them. Uh, this one, it wants you to conquer uh, the end of the world areas, so which I believe is over here. Basically wants you to conquer stuff that's very far away from where you are. You can do it as Bactria, much easier as the Seleucids. Uh, you could also desecrate the holy sites of Zoroastrianism um, if you want this one, Holy Fire. You will own quite a few holy sites by the time you're done. Um, you only need to do one, and then you need to do the other ten religions. Um, you start out with like three religions in your land, three or four, so that puts you off to a good start. Uh, what else we got? Here we go. As the Seleucid Kingdom, conquer Pella before the dictator, uh, the death of your initial ruler. Not very hard to do, especially if the Antigonids conquer it first. You just keep going. Um, I missed it by about two months in my last one. Um, it's actually really easy. Um, in fact, the Seleucids are a pretty good content, uh, contender for conquering the world because of their unintegrated culture or happiness. Um, it's very powerful. Another strategy that somebody mentioned to me, also you can do this, build the great wonders around the world if you conquer it. Another strategy someone pointed out to me is based off the fact that the Seleucids have high, uh, basically they get some approval from nations anyway as you can see we have like plus 24 happiness just by owning the land um another strategy that someone said i should consider is going under religious trees going over to major syncretism you get an additional plus 15 culture group happiness um but you lose conversion speed basically you'll never convert anything else but uh, plus 15 is really huge to keeping your land stable, um, even unconverted. So that's the strategy you can try. I prefer to convert things because also building the grand temples and stuff provide provincial loyalty as well. So you build several of them in an area, you're more likely to keep it loyal. It's really up to you guys. It's a very fun country to play. You have lots of rich land. You have lots of annoying cultures and religions in your land you need to convert and deal with. Um, in terms of culture, though, um, you start off with uh, Macedonian and Babylonian both integrated. You have this Median culture here you could very easily integrate as well. Um, you also start off with Persian integrated. You do got to be careful that you don't have too many cultures integrated, but you could probably do Median. You could probably do Assyrian if you wanted to, at which point, as you can see, that... Um, this area would be stable, and this area would be stable through here. Obviously, this Persian area is pretty stable. Um, it would put you in a good starting position. It's up to you if you want to deal with the long-term unhappiness of your religion. Um, anything else in the world to do? Uh, I don't recommend you um, integrate Bactria and Parthia for some time. Leave them alone. Uh, what else we got? Uh, obviously do auto accept trades at all your provinces to auto trading you've got a lot of provinces ideally you go through if you've got spare political power and put in one level of investment because all it costs is political influence which does not cost money um, most of these provinces have a very low food income so if you're marching armies through it having a trade route bringing in grain helps a lot um once you get going, you might want to flip your uh, commerce to either export or import, depending on how much more money you're getting. Uh, in terms of laws, at some point you want to switch to Agnetic Cogenic. That way you never run out of male heirs. Um, but you do start with the bloodline of the bloodline of the ruler here, 
which gives provincial loyalty and change governor costs reduced. Finance finesse and prominence you want to keep this as long as you can the provincial loyalty is huge as i've said so ideally you only want males with that bloodline to inherit because only males can pass on the bloodline but in the event that you only have a female heir you do want to have that law available to you uh, it's better to take it early on when you don't need it um than when you desperately do because you usually will be in dire straits otherwise Another strategy you can do is invade down here, take out Gertha, Gera, and Ma, Ma, Maka. Um, I don't rec really recommend you do it. Uh, once you get some imp um, improved relations with them, you can usually just make them a tributary or a tribal vassal uh, or a client state, and then you can kind of just forget about them. Uh, in terms of invading of the Maura, you basically want to own this area already first. Uh, the war against them, I found, takes two to three wars, even with the um, the winning land by the spear, the imperial challenge war goal. It takes quite a while to weaken the Maura that you take their land. When you do invade, move all your levies there first before you declare war, send buy a lot of mercs, and then set them loose, and you will win that. Again, this is far down the oratory tree. Obviously, as you conquer things, you want the A reduction. So this should be one you get when you really need it. It's not something you need to go for early on. Um, most of the struggle is the Seleucids will be after your initial conquest, keeping your empire together um, and building up a tech base, which obviously you do by building academies in lands where you've got nobles which initially is just the area right around your capital. Um, later on, it will be like Macedon and Thrace, where you have a fair amount of Macedonian population anyway. So that will be the guide for the Seleucids. Um, Seleucids, hopefully you guys enjoy that. Uh, they have some loyalty issues with provinces and governors, but overall, um, they're definitely the best nation to hold this area due to their uh, unintegrated culture happiness bonus which is really strong. Um, good luck. It'll probably be easy. It'll be very easy for you to reunite Alexander's empire um, and form the Hellenic empire. Those are the provinces you need in green. Um, they were in green. They keep disappearing. Um, they exist on the map. That's how you find them. Two in the Maura. The rest you already own, basically. And then Egypt, Macedon, the Antigonids, Thrace, and uh, uh, Athens, and Corinth, basically. And you should be all set. So good luck, good conquering. Reunite Alexander's empire from a Persian base. Thanks for watching. Check out my other stuff. Bye for now.